The following content contains images and descriptions that viewers may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The urban legend of an insane murderer known as Cropsey originated in Staten Island, New York in the 1970s and 80s. Cropsey was said to be a deranged man that had escaped from a mental asylum, a crazed psycho that prowled around at the edges of playgrounds and in the tunnels beneath Staten Island's abandoned Seaview Hospital and Tuberculosis Ward. They say Cropsey comes out at night to hunt children and snatch them off the streets. Some legends claim he has a sharp hook for a hand, others say he wields a bloody axe. He was always out there, lurking in the shadows, looking to drag children back to the ruins of Seaview Hospital and hack them to pieces. The bedtime stories were meant to scare children into behaving, but as it was discovered years later, Staten Island's boogeyman was very, very real. Andre Rand was born on March 11, 1944, in Manhattan, New York, under the name Frank Ruchon. After his father died when Rand was 14 years old, his mother was sent to the Pilgrim Psychiatric Center for treatment, and it has been suggested that it was the horror of witnessing his mother's living conditions that led to his own mental illness. Using the name Bruchette, Rand worked as a custodian at Staten Island's Willowbrook State School from 1966 to 1968 an institution for children with disabilities funded by New York State. Willowbrook kept its patients in dismal conditions. With insufficient manpower and supplies, there were over 50 patients for every single orderly, leaving the patients to fend for themselves even if it meant sitting for days in their own waste and being fed very little. Even the most noble of staff members would not have been able to care for the patients properly. With the building falling apart around them, Willow Brook was eventually closed due to the physical, emotional, and sexual abuse of disabled children living there. Rand would become homeless, drifting around on Staten Island and living in a series of rooming houses, shelters, and makeshift campsites in the woods behind Willow Brook. People in the area described him as articulate and well-read, which was a far different impression than he would later give police during questioning, feigning a mental handicap. In 1969, he was arrested in the South Bronx after attempting to rape a nine-year-old girl. Rand pled guilty to a lesser charge of sexual misconduct, was sentenced to four years, but only served 16 months in jail. Back on the street, he legally changed his name to Rand, logging three more arrests by the end of the decade for minor offenses, including burglary. Then, between the school's closing and the early 1970s, several young girls in the area went missing. The first was in 1972 when five-year-old Alice Pereira seemed to vanish into thin air while playing in her neighborhood with her brother just a few miles southeast of Willowbrook. However, officers were short on solid evidence required for an indictment. Then in 1981, seven-year-old Holly Ann Hughes went missing and several witnesses claimed to have seen the girl with Rand on the day of her disappearance. Once more, he was released for lack of evidence. In 1979, he was accused of raping a young woman and a 15-year-old girl, but neither one pressed charges. In 1981, Rand offered a 9-year-old girl a lollipop and tried to entice her to ride in his Volkswagen. When she refused his offer, Rand followed her home and searched for her while she hid under a rug, but no charges were ever filed. In 1983, while working for a Staten Island school bus company, he abducted 11 children, bought them lunch, and drove them to New Jersey's Newark International Airport for no apparent reason. He was never convicted of kidnapping as none of the kids were harmed, but he did serve time on charges of unlawful imprisonment and was sentenced to 10 months in jail. Later that same year, Rand became a primary suspect again shortly after he was released from prison when 11-year-old Thais Jackson disappeared. In 1984, 21-year-old Hank Gaforio, who was said to have a low IQ, vanished after being seen with Rand at a diner. These unnerving incidents left the town in terror, especially as the bodies of the victims were never recovered. Then in 1987, Jennifer Schweiger, a 12-year-old girl born with Down syndrome, was reported missing and her body was found 35 days later in a shallow grave on the former property of the Willowbrook State School within sight of Rand's makeshift lean-to. At the time, Rand had already been arrested in connection with Schweiger's kidnapping and was also caught lying to reporters about never having met the girl before. Rand changed his story only after his defense lawyer learned that there were several witnesses who saw Rand with his bicycle leading Schweiger away by the hand from her house 
toward the woods at Willowbrook. Though the jury could not come to a verdict on the murder charge, they did convict him of first-degree kidnapping in 1988 and, as there is no statute of limitations in New York for first-degree kidnapping, Rand was also later found guilty of Hughes' kidnapping in 2004. They were never able to prove that he committed the murders, but were able to convict him of kidnapping. He was sentenced to 25 years in 1988 for Jennifer Schweiger, then another 25 years in 2004 for the kidnapping of Holly Ann Hughes. Rand is currently serving consecutive 25 years to life sentences for two kidnapping convictions, eligible for parole in 2037 at 93 years old. To this day, he still refuses to reveal the locations of the other missing children. For more videos about the paranormal and the unexplained, please like and subscribe to the Oddities Observed channel.